Hey, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to calculate and plot a correlation matrix in Python using pandas. So what is a correlation matrix? In short, a correlation matrix is a tool that lets you visualize and identify the different strengths and weaknesses of correlation between two different features of a data set. What's helpful with this is that it allows you to do this visually in order to be able to identify uh, overlapping features or be able to identify different types of correlation within your data set that you may not have experienced before. This is an important part of any data science project that you take on and knowing how to do this efficiently using pandas can make your data science project that much easier. Let's dive right in and take a look at how to calculate a correlation matrix and plot it using Python and Seaborn. So for this tutorial, we're actually going to be loading a data set on, the, on different penguins available in the Seaborn library. So in order to be able to follow along with this tutorial, we can import two libraries. So we're gonna import pandas using the alias pd. Then we're gonna import Seaborn here using the alias uh, sns. Now we can load our data frame using the load data set function available in the Seaborn library. We're gonna be loading this penguins data set here. We can take a look at the first five records by using the head method. So what we can see here is that we have a number of different columns, but only four of them are numeric. If you think about this, it only makes sense to look at uh, the correlation between different values in terms of their numeric attributes. We can't, for example, find the correlation between categorical values here, such as in the species or island or sex categories. So pandas will be smart enough to be able to work around this limitation and not even try to take a look at the correlation between these values. So let's take a look at how we can actually calculate the correlation matrix. Pandas makes this actually incredibly easy, and all we need to do is apply the core method here for correlation. So when we run this, we actually get back this matrix here. There's a couple of things that I want to point, off, uh, point out right off the bat. We have four rows, but we also have four columns. Remember, at the beginning, I mentioned that we had four numeric columns here. And so what pandas is going to do is filter down to only numeric type columns and, be, and plot that as part of the correlation matrix. So what we'll see here actually is that all of the numeric columns are repeated as uh, columns, but also as rows. So what we can see in all of these cells is the correlation between one column and another column. So what you'll notice right off the bat is that this diagonal line here is all ones. So a one, when we're thinking of it in terms of correlation, is the strongest type of positive correlation that you can have, meaning that every, for every single value that this given column increases, so will the other column. And so intuitively this makes sense because these are all the exact same columns. So typically in a correlation matrix, we won't look at these values. And so in terms of correlation, we can think of them as being values between negative one and one. Both negative one and positive one actually demonstrate very strong cor correlation, though in different directions. Now, a value closer to zero, regardless if it's negative or positive, implies a looser sense of correlation between the values. So this in itself is already quite useful, but we can take it another step further. We can actually round the values in our correlation matrix just to make it a little bit easier to look at. And so the way that we can do this is actually just by applying the round method here. So the round method allows us to round to a set number of decimal places. So say we wanted to round the values to two decimal places. We could rerun the cell and see how much easier and cleaner this matrix looks now. But we can take it another step further and actually plot a visual based on this correlation matrix in order to be able to understand it better. So in order to do this, let's actually import matplotlib here. So once we have this imported, we've already imported Seaborn, which we're gonna to use to create this heat map. So what we can do is call the heat map function here and pass in this correlation matrix. And again, we'll round our values here to two. 
Now, when we run this here, we can see that it's actually created this nicely formatted correlation matrix. Now there's a couple of things to note here. Right now we have no sense of what these values actually are unless we try and map them to their corresponding color. So what we can do is actually pass in this parameter here, annotate or a not, and set it equal to true. So what this will do is actually put in the values that we've rounded here into our correlation matrix. So one of the things that we might notice as we're taking a look at this is that the positive values go to positive one, but our negative values seem to only go to negative 0.5 or negative 0.6. This isn't really ideal because it really makes it visually seem like these values here are much more correlated than the positive values are. So what we can do is actually set minimum and maximum values. So we can use this vmin and set it to equal to negative one and a vmax and set it equal to positive one. So when we run this, we can see that the legend and the values actually go from negative one to positive one. And we can see that the values here that were previously really dark black were set, are now set to a much lighter color implying a weaker correlation. So similarly, we can actually set the center attribute here. And so because we've already defined this vmin and vmax, this isn't necessarily necessary, but if we didn't have fully correlated values, it could be a good way to center the color balance. Now, one last thing we can actually do here is pass in a color map. So right now it's not the most intuitive that we're going from this dark black to some color of beige. It may actually make more sense to pass in a color map that goes from blue to red. And so we can use the CMAP argument here and pass in this divergent color scheme here, which will allow us to go from blue to red and be able to really suss out which ones are negative correlations and which ones are positive correlations. All right, so let's take this example one step further. One of the things we know is that all of these are really just mirrored images of one another. And the reason for this is that each column is represented both as a on the y-axis as well as the x-axis. But this is actually a little bit redundant and it makes the visualization a little bit harder to look at. So let's take a look at how we can nuance this out a little bit and reduce the impact of our visualization. So what we're actually gonna do here is we'll take our correlation matrix here and we'll just assign this to a new variable. So what we're gonna do is just call this matrix here, for example, and then in order to be able to hide some of these values, we're actually gonna mask our matrix. And in order to do this, of course, we're gonna use NumPy. So we're gonna import NumPy as NP here. So now that we have all of this set up, what we can actually do is apply a mask to this. And so we're gonna use this TRIU function here and use a ones like function and pass in our matrix and use this D type of bool. So let's take a look at what this mask matrix looks like now. So we need to change this here to ones like. We've actually created this upper triangle where only the triangle in the top right is set to true. And so we've created this mask, which we can now actually apply to this heat map style matrix here. And the way that we can do this is again by calling the heat map function, just like we did before. We're gonna pass in our matrix again. We're gonna set the annotations to be true. We're gonna set our V max and our V min again. And again, we'll use our color map here. And now the last parameter that we're gonna pass in is our mask. And so when we run this, we can actually see that it's removed any of the values that were labeled as true here, because all of certainly all of these ones are completely redundant, but also all of the values up top are redundant. We can now actually much more easily parse out which ones here are the strongest correlations rather than needing to look at comparing which ones are duplicates of the, the above results.
So now that we've covered off how to visualize a lot of this, let's take a look at how we can analyze these results just a little bit better. So recall that we actually saved our correlation matrix in this matrix variable here. What we can actually do is if we only wanted to look at really strong correlations, we could actually filter this data frame. The best way we can do this actually is by first unstacking it. And so when we unstack it, let's take a look at what this looks like before we go any further. So what this has done now is it's actually almost unpivoted all of this table. So we can now actually filter our matrix a little bit further to say that we only want values where the absolute correlation value is equal to or greater than 0.7. So what we get back is really showing us only the values where that correlation is equal to or greater than 0.7. So we can also apply the same line of thinking to only look at positive correlations. So if we only wanted to see positive correlations, we can simply filter down this unstack matrix to only show values that are positive here, in which case we need to remove this absolute function here as well. So here we can now only see positively correlated relationships. So that brings us to the end of today's tutorial. I really hope that you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you have any questions about any of the content here, feel free to leave a comment below. If you have a moment, please consider subscribing, hitting the little bell icon to be notified, to receive notifications when I, re when I release new videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.